welcome back to the Tokes Talks podcast, a space where I give you strategies and tips for entrepreneurship, relationships, and personal development. Happy Wednesday, happy hump day. I hope you're having an amazing week so far. And this week, I want to talk to you about the three things I had to release to succeed in entrepreneurship. So yesterday, February 8th, marked three years since I quit my job and went down the path of entrepreneurship. It's gone by fast, but it's also gone by slow. And the pandemic has made it interesting. But what I can say for sure is that in these past three years, there have been a lot of lessons and gems that I have gained. It's moving faster. It's getting better. There are new things being added. I feel super excited and I'm grasping all the information as I continue to learn it. But if I'm being honest, I feel like the things that I have released have made me most successful on this journey. So since it's three years, I thought it was only right to share with you three things that I released that have set me up for success and that allow me to take risks. These three things that I released are for entrepreneurship, but if I'm being honest and I look at them and I meditate over them. They're also for my personal development. They are for the relationships that I'm gaining, the relationships that I'm fostering. It's really for every single part of my life. So even if you're not an entrepreneur, if that's not what interests you, I'm sure that you can still find value in these three things and how releasing them can show you or open you up to more opportunities or help you look at things a little bit differently. So the first thing I released was the need to be perfect. I think this one, I talk about it a lot. I say that perfection is sugar-coated procrastination because it just sounds better, right? Or gold-plated procrastination, whichever one. But in order for me to have continued and gained traction and grown on this entrepreneurial journey, I had to release myself from the need to be perfect. One of the things I say a lot is do it while it's messy and sloppy. Um, It might sound counterintuitive, it might be cringy, but what I've learned, even in writing poetry, writing my books, doing this whole life journey that I'm on is that refining happens as you go. And if you wait for things to be perfect before you get started, you'll never be started, get started because one, perfection doesn't exist. And two, a lot of the problems and the struggles that you come up against happen when you're on the path. You know, you can just like think about GPS, right? If you turn on your GPS and you say you want to get to a destination and you just sit in your car in the parking lot and you never move, you won't know what traffic is ahead of you. You won't know how to be redirected, but it's when you start to take those steps, when you start to move forward that you can see whether or not you're on the right path. If there's a new obstruction in your way, you get redirected, right? So start while your legs are shaking, start while things are sloppy. And as you're going, give yourself the grace to be able to refine and get better and improve as you go because that's where all the information lies and don't delay beyond logical reason right now i'm starting this youtube journey and part of the reason why i delayed was one i felt like i didn't have tech that was good enough two socially awkward on camera in my own opinion (laughs) and three i I felt like, oh my gosh, you have to get dressed, you have to get ready every single time you wanna you wanna do a video. That seems like a lot of stress, right? And this was reasons why I could delay. But what I realized is that instead of delaying, let me look for the path of least resistance. So if you watch on my YouTube channel, my podcast episodes, for the most part, I'm in the same outfit for all of them for the month. Why? Because I batch record. Why? Because that's the only way I can get everything I need to get done done without losing my mind in the process. So before I'm like, oh my gosh, I have to get ready. I have to change outfits. I have to think of all these outfits. And I'm like, no, not yet. Maybe there will be a season in my life where I'm like, you know what? Even if I'm recording four or five podcasts in a day, I'm going to put on four different tops in that day. But that day is not today. And I didn't allow that 
knowing myself and knowing that that's not what I'm capable of yet to stop me from from putting stuff out. So I released myself from that. And I'm sure one day there will be a comment that says, why is she always wearing the same outfit? And I will refer them to this episode and let them know why, right? If I wanted to be perfect, if I wanted to look at everybody else, I still wouldn't have started on a lot of the things that I've started. I wouldn't have done it in the way that I've done it because I'd be so scared. And I think something else that really liberates me from the need to be perfect is the fact that nothing is final. If I make a decision today, I have the freedom to make another decision tomorrow. If it, if it worked for me today and it no longer works tomorrow, I, I don't become a failure. What I do instead is say, hmm, it worked for me then and it's not working now. What is the evolution that has taken place and what does that stretching require of me now that I didn't have to do before? right? When you're refining the things that you could get away with in the beginning while you were giving yourself grace, as you continue to improve, no one's going to have to tell you. You're going to feel it within yourself that you're entering into a new level. And with that new level, you will grow accordingly, right? Instead of waiting to do all of that growth before you even start, you don't even know where you're growing to, (laughs) let alone where you're going to. So don't stress yourself. So I released myself from the need to be perfect. The second one is that I released myself from the outcome. So I am purpose driven, not outcome driven, because I know that focusing on the outcome will break my heart. I sometimes I post something. I think it's the greatest thing I've ever posted. This is going to kill it. This is going (laughs) to this is going to break the Internet. This is going to go viral. And then crickets. It doesn't resonate the way I thought it would. It doesn't pick up traction. Even even the people who sh- support me all the time don't even repost it, so it's really not slapping. And there's heartbreak in that. And in thinking that A plus B will always equal C, in the moments that it didn't equal C, it could almost make me feel paralyzed or discouraged from ever doing the math ever again, ever doing A again, ever doing B again. So. What I did was that instead of thinking about the outcome, I thought about my purpose. So I asked myself, is this important to me? Do I feel like this could impact one person? Do I feel like this is worthy of being put out there regardless of what happens? And when the answer to those questions were yes, that was all the justification I needed. I needed personal conviction, right? And it's important not to put your measures and your joy into externals. Because people are fickle. And if you take your joy, which is something that you're supposed to hold internally and put it in the hands of people, of social media, of trends, you're living in the wild, wild west. I don't even know what else to call it. Because every single time something happens and the tide changes and people were interested in this yesterday, but they're no longer interested in it today, you run the risk of having your joy stolen from you. You might be on top today, but tomorrow you're on the bottom. And if you are judging your life from where people place you, you're constantly going to be in limbo because they'll be taking you up and they'll be taking you down and they'll be taking you all around. Right. And that's what happens when we, when we go from being people who are influencers in whatever capacity, I don't even mean social media influencers, but I think that works here, to being influenced. So instead of us doing things because of our conviction, we do things based on what we think people want. We start to play into their hand in a way that can be very dangerous in business. So another thing is that really helped me with releasing myself from the outcome is remembering that people are people just like me. And when I think of people being people just like me, what that means is that I'm fickle. I might like, I might see a post and I might enjoy it and like it, but I might not actually double tap and like it. I might get an email from somebody and it might be on a day where I feel like I've been inundated with so many emails, so I don't even reply. So if I'm out here sending emails, shooting my shot, putting out feelers for business opportunities and because people didn't get back to me like I thought they should have, they didn't reply the way I thought, I get so discouraged. I'm forgetting that I do the exact same thing so often. I don't reply to all my emails. I don't reply to all my DMs. I don't like 
physically click like on everything that I like. I don't repost everything that I should. I don't comment on everything. And yet we want to sit here and forget that we're doing this to other people not maliciously and then automatically assume that because they're doing it to us it's with malicious intent right so move in your purpose release yourself from the outcome and know peace and that's how i've been able to know peace and that's how i'm able to continue to shoot my shot try things out throw things at the wall see if it sticks even if it doesn't stick i might just throw it at another wall because it might stick over there right and not put so much pressure on the results of people getting back to me, people co-signing me, people christening me and letting me know that I'm great for me to feel like what I'm doing is having impact. If I feel convicted that this is something that needs to be said and I said it, that's impact enough. Wherever it goes, whenever it gets there, that's above my pay grade. My job is to be the deliverer of this information and hope that the recipients receive it whenever they're meant to receive it. So the third thing that I had to release myself from to find continued and growing success in entrepreneurship is that I released myself from comparison. Comparison is the thief of joy. Comparison will have you looking at people and getting angry at them because they have something that when you look at what you have makes you your stuff feel small and now you're you're bitter. And one thing I've learned is that even if I'm happy for you and I want something similar to yours, I don't want what you have. I want my personal version of it. So you having yours and having success in your way is not hindering my success because I don't want what you have. I'm not interested in what you have because it's not mine. And if it's not mine, I'm not going to be able to maintain it. And if I can't maintain it and I'm going to squander it, why would I want failure? Nobody wants that, like even though it's a reality, right? So wanting my own version of stuff and being able to look at people and say, hmm, I see what they have. It looks cool. How does this work for me? How can I figure out what this looks like for me and strive towards that instead of being angry at somebody's arrival? Because sometimes the things that people have or the things that they show us they have you wouldn't even be willing to do what they did to get there. And I think that's a part that we don't consider. We look at people's fruit without considering the root. And we don't realize the cost and the sacrifices and the things that they had to do, whether it be above board or below board or outside of the board, we might not be willing to do it. And that could be something as easy as looking at someone and seeing the type of success they have and saying, oh my gosh, I want that many followers or I want that many subscribers. I want that many people tuned in. And then realizing that they post six times a day. And I'm looking at myself like, if I get out six posts in a week, that is a miracle. So I don't want it because if I wanted it, I'd be able to do that. And I really am not interested in doing that, right? And realizing the fact that our paths are very different and very unique so the directions that it took people to get to their destination and the directions that it takes me to get to my destination might be completely different and that and that also includes timing right you might have started at the same time as someone and it seems like they're a lot further today than you and that can have you feeling like you want to compare yourself to them and say what's wrong with me why am i going slower but Time is a figment of our imagination. And a moment that you can think you're going slower than somebody else, you can hit an opportunity that will fast track you and put you ahead of that person. And they could hit an opportunity that will put you, them right back up beside you. And then you guys can be going at the same pace again or however we'll have it, right? But our paths are very unique. And the moment you say, I'm committed to my path and I'm going to go at the pace that I believe is right. Like the only time I compare myself is when I compare myself to what I know I should be doing versus what I'm not doing. That's where I get it. Like if I'm feeling uncomfortable, if I'm feeling disheveled, if I'm feeling unmotivated, or if I'm feeling uneasy or stirred, it's usually because I know that there's something I should be doing that I've been avoiding and I don't have peace about it. It has nothing to do with anybody else. Or maybe I might see somebody else do something and it might remind me of, oh yeah, that's the thing you've been avoiding, right? But 
release yourself from your com the comparison game of others. Compare yourself to your best. If I know that I needed six hours to get my work done and I decided to spend two of those hours on TikTok because that's a dangerous place to be on when you have stuff to do, <laughs> spend two of those hours on TikTok and then the next day I'm feeling stressed out and I go on social media and I see someone flourishing in their business, who, how dare I compare myself to that? How dare I even get angry? Because the things that are on my plate to finish, I haven't even, I haven't even finished my plate and I have the audacity to look at somebody else's plate. Don't do that. So release yourself from comparison. And this is in the business space, it's in your personal space, it's in your relationship space, because sometimes we're looking at what people have, not understanding that they're showing us the highlight reel and that the real stuff going on inside ain't nothing that you're interested in. So I'm super excited. This is three years of me doing this entrepreneurship thing. And I'm so excited to see what happens, what continues to happen, the traction that I'm gaining, the new steps that I'm walking into. And like this podcast, because in two episodes, it's going to be 150 episodes of this podcast. And I am so grateful to each and every one of you who have listened from janky episode one all the way to this episode right here 148 you are part of the reason why i feel encouraged to continue this journey sharing my path with you sharing my hits sharing my misses and just getting this support from you all and i am so so grateful and i can't wait to share with you what this fourth year of this journey brings and bring it all to you on the airways. So thank you so, so much for listening. If this resonates with you, if you feel like there's somebody you know who needs to release these things, either to succeed in entrepreneurship or just to get ahead and have some peace in their life, please share it with them. Review, subscribe, leave a comment and have an amazing week. And I'll talk to you next Wednesday. Bye.